Welcome back to The New Mechanic. My name is Randy, and that's my E46. Today, we're going to be replacing the fuel filter, which includes the uh, fuel pressure regulator inside it. Um, so I'm just going to get this done. We're going to do it quickly because I just need to get it done. All right, so this is gonna be a short video because frankly, I just wanna get this done. It's really not that complicated. We're gonna jack up the car. There's a few screws or bolts that we have to take out uh, to get to this. There's like a plate on top of it. Uh, then we just have to take off each of the, uh, the fuel lines and whatnot and uh, put the new one in. So it's not gonna be bad, but we just gotta get it done. Also, please ignore all the uh, black and the blurred out areas. Uh, it's the car that I have not revealed yet. All right, so after jacking it up, getting it on jack stands, uh, we gotta relieve the fuel pressure. And there's a couple ways you can do this. Some people pull the fuse uh, and then run the car. It'll run until it uses all the fuel. Uh, what I think is easier, uh, probably a little bit less safe because you get fuel places and like it'll, it'll be messy, uh, is just to go onto uh, the fuel rail and uh, there's a little Schrader valve in here that we just need to press down on and uh, it'll release it. So what I'm gonna do is there's a little cap. Little cap, there we go. Now there's a Schrader valve in there. Uh, I'm gonna set this somewhere safe. That's somewhere safe, I'll never forget it there. Uh, this doesn't actually fit perfectly, but I have a kit from Advanced Auto. Uh, this is the Ford adapter. And what I'm just gonna do here is wrap it up. Oh. Well, would you look at that? It's not even leaking bad. Now I'm gonna go get the rest of the uh, kit. Uh, we'll tighten it down and then we'll be able to release it that way safely. All right, using the Ford adapter. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, screw this in. All right, so technically I could read some fuel pressure if there was, but I'm just gonna press this little valve here. And I think, I think we're good. I don't think we have any fuel pressure. Okay, get this guy off. All right, put this away and then we'll just press the uh, little valve in there. Just make sure we got it all. All right, I'm just gonna press the little valve in here with some scissors because I have all the right tools. All right, we're good. We have no fuel pressure in there. Great. And while I'm still up here, let's put the cap back on. Also, forgot to mention, I already took off the cover up here. Um, your engine might not have the cover because someone took it off and never put it back on. Uh, but there's a cover right here that goes over top of here. So just take it off, there's two bolts. Pretty simple. All right, so we gotta go up underneath the driver's side tire, just like that. All right, so what we're gonna need is an eight millimeter wrench, and I also assume a uh, flathead uh, screwdriver like this, because we gotta take off some of the, uh, uh, the fuel lines. So, let's go ahead and take off this cover. There's definitely one here, here, back here. And there might be one back somewhere that I can't see right now, but we're gonna start with these three. Always forget something when I'm down here. Let's go get a flashlight. Oh, haha, flashlight. All right, there are two little things that are right behind the splash shield. So hopefully they are also eight millimeter because that would be very convenient, but you know how life goes. I think they are eight millimeter. All right, we're about to get the first one off. They're just these like weird little cap like thingies. I'm not really sure how to explain it except for just to show you. They look like, like that. No idea if that's felt, uh, focused, but that's okay. All right, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put one of these in just so that this whole plate doesn't fall on me once I get this next one out. It might be helpful if you raise the back end too and get bigger jack stands, but I'm just a new mechanic.
Okay, there's that other doohickey. Now we can go ahead and take this one out. Whoop, dropped it. That's okay. And presto, we got this splash shield out. All right. All right, so this is right here what we are replacing. Not too bad. We got a couple uh, flathead pipe clamps that we got to do here. We got this guy that I actually replaced. That's why there's a weird connector here. Uh, before it went straight on here. Uh, the way I did it, nah, this works, whatever. Uh, we gotta do this one, we gotta do these pipe clamps as well, and then we also have to unbolt it uh, right here, and it looks like it'll just clip right out when uh, we undo this guy. So, I think the first thing that might make sense is to take off all these pipe clamps, uh, and this is the vacuum line, or a vacuum line, so we'll just pop that guy off. That goes up to the F connector up at the uh, air intake system, so uh, not too complicated. Okay. Getting loose. I can move it. Also, these look like they might be like six millimeter or maybe even like their quarter inch, I'm not sure. Um, so it's probably better not to use flathead and just use the right size, but this is what we got right now. And because we're working with gasoline, don't recommend using power tools. Now in theory, woo, made a bad noise, but that's okay. So we got this off the body, but now we gotta figure out how to get these fuel hoses off nicely without breaking the rubber because I would like to reuse the rubber without breaking the hoses that are holding it up. All right, so let's go ahead and get these hoses off. Uh, this has been a pain because I've actually been working on this off camera. So let's see if I can come up with a good solution here off of the one from behind. It's a little bit this one's really rusty. Okay, it's a lot further up there. All right, now I can move it by hand. So I'm just gonna get really close to where the barb is, and then we're gonna work on the back ones. And then uh, hopefully the idea is to swap out the new one relatively quickly so that we don't leak a ton of fluid everywhere. But you know, if we do, such is life. Okay, so, uh, Side one. There we go. Cool. Just making sure I knew which one's which, and we will go ahead and start getting these rear ones off. All right. So uh, this goes to the front like this. This sits like this, and I'm just gonna go ahead and pop one off, slide it on the other. Okay. Cool. Got one, we're dripping a lot of fluid, that's okay. All right, the other one is on, awesome. Now, the fuel filter has fuel in it, which shouldn't be surprising. Go ahead and pull that off. Try to get this one in. There we go, cool. We are good, we're gonna go ahead and wipe everything up real quick and get the old fuel filter out of here. I'll wipe this down a little bit. Well, that's exciting. We got the new one on. I hope it's a new one. <laughs> Just kidding. It's got to be the new one. Okay. So, let's get all these fully on. All right, cool. You are fully on. We'll go ahead and tighten these down. So I've heard that you're supposed to replace these. I, I didn't because I don't have them, but these are actually a little bit different than hose clamps. Uh, these are made in such a way that apparently is not supposed to uh, 
puncture or damage the rubber here, these little rubber tubes. So, uh, if you replace them, great. Uh, if you don't, well, it's not my fault because I told you you probably should. There we go, that one is nice and tight. We're gonna put this F connector back on. Great, F connectors on. Let's do these back too. All right, so we got it done. We just gotta go ahead and get the jack stands out, put it back down, uh, and start the car. Uh, what I'm planning on doing is basically turning the key on and off just a couple times just to get the fuel pressure in here, start the car, and then also look underneath to make sure that there's no fuel leaks, because that's a bad day. Uh, but hopefully this brings our fuel trims back down, and uh, yeah, so hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you can change your fuel filter pretty easily in the future. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching. Really do appreciate it. If you liked it, hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.